In this video series, I'm going to show you how to use a Mega Motor 6 to resuscitate a vintage Rhino robot arm and make it do something interesting. Now, in case you have no interest in that, but are looking at this thing and thinking that looks cool, then stick around a bit while I tell you the sad story of why these things even exist. T minus 15, 14, 13, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 1, remain engine start, we have... The shuttle has cleared the tower. Back in the 80s, as the shuttle program launched into action, everyone, and I do mean everyone, was anticipating the imminent arrival of robotic servants. In the decades before, robots seemed like the impractical and futuristic stuff of crazy Hollywood science fiction movies. But then seemingly overnight, having a robot doing our chores felt like something that was seriously overdue. While Hollywood played a role, this shift in expectations had more to do with computers going from room-sized bohemas to small handheld units, which told us that the computerized 80s was going to be the dawning of the robotics revolution. It was an expectation confirmed by the arrival of home robotics, for those rich enough to afford it. Hoping to position themselves in this newly emerging market, several companies started manufacturing robotic arms for educational purposes. Thousands of these things were sold to schools and universities worldwide as teams of eager engineers worked diligently to bring fleets of robot servants to a store near you. Manufacturers predict that within a few years, robots like these will liberate us from mundane and time-consuming household chores. In case you didn't notice, that didn't happen. And the reason why I came down to one thing, artificial intelligence was way more complex than anyone had ever imagined. So much so that by the early 90s, researchers began guesstimating that in order to get a robot to do the things that people were expecting it to do, it would need the computational power of a million computers or more, which was a bit of a showstopper because a million PCs back then would cost over 15 billion in today's dollars, not to mention the fact that it wouldn't fit in a robot anyway. Even if computational power kept doubling every 18 months, which was in doubt, it still seemed hopeless because it would take 30 years to get there. Eventually, reality started sinking in and the consumers willing to shell out more than the list price of a compact car for a mechanical novelty that couldn't even do a single household chore faded away. Consequently, those robotic arms sitting around at homes and schools got buried in the backs of closets as we waited for technology to catch up with expectations. To everyone's astonishment, Moore's Law held up, and while robotic servants on par with Hollywood expectations still have not arrived, the real-life robots that are commercially available right now are beyond amazing. Nowadays, computers are so small, fast, and inexpensive that each individual sensor can have its own dedicated computer, which means those old robot arms from the 80s can be brought back to life. And since there's a limited number of them still around, they have become quite the collector's item. If you're thinking of getting one, I recommend getting a Rhino. It's the one I'm going to be using for my 40th year anniversary release of the world's first checkerplaying robot, which is the reason I created the Mega Motor 6 Rhino Robot Controller in the first place. I'll go over how it all works in part 2 and beyond, so be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you there.